Okay, well, uh, my name is Matu Royer, and I'm the executive chef here at the Boathouse Collective in Costa Mesa. I've been here from the start. We will have completed three years in September. This is my dream job. This space wasn't supposed to be a restaurant, you know. It was. It started out as a, a boat hangar where they would roll yachts in and work on them. And that's why we have that door in front that, that swings all the way open. And so it was just this kind of odd shaped long warehouse. And when Clay got a hold of it, originally this was just to be his kind of like creative sanctuary. He put personal touches on and he's very much into uh, using reclaimed wood and taking things and recycling and restoring and so there's definitely a kind of eclectic feel as soon as you walk in here so okay. that is the first thing the second thing is that there's live music here we do everything from country and folk indie rock soul reggae it seems to me that you know over th three years there hasn't been a genre that we haven't um, <laughs> entertained here the third thing is is that we have a craft cocktail bar here where uh, we make all the ingredients from scratch and there's a kind of like one of the creative outlets and I know that that's popular now we definitely have our own kind of spin and and touch on that um, plus we feature local breweries and and then you get to the food it's all over the board you know I mean I'm half Japanese and so that's kind of my where my foundation is but there's never been a food or a culture that I can't get something from. We're not afraid to use any ingredients together. And it doesn't, you know, as long as the food's good. You know? Tell us. I highly recommend that. The omakase, you know, to say we're, you know, you can kind of lay down your budget and then we'll take it from there, it. Uh, take you through the courses, give you a little bit of everything. One thing though, you know, that I think is worth mentioning is that we, you know, we've got everything from, you know, $5 side of, roasted sweet potato with miso butter, all the way up to a $40 20 ounce charcoal grilled ribeye with single malt demi-glace and horseradish cream. So it's like, there are many different ways you can go depending on how you, f you feel. So it's kind of whatever inspires you and go from there. Every day that I can, I go to the beach and I get in the water to surf and that has been essential. <laughs> A lot of my creative inspiration comes from being in the water. It is, and it does create a kind of zen zone where you just find a peace out there and a clarity of mind that allows ideas to come in and develop. In my case, especially, I can sort of cloud my mind with, with the things that I have to do and the things that I have to deal with. And for a couple hours every morning, I have a chance to just sort of like let everything go away and kind of let the things that I choose enter my mind and so a lot of the, the, the problem solving happens in the water and then a lot of the, the creative inspiration and development happens too. And, and on a good day I'll come out of the water and just be like, I've solved the, you know, the world's problems and so that's, that's important, very important to me. I've had some experience with charity work and it's always left me sort of confused I think, you know, I, I always want to know how are these funds getting from here to the people that need them? And what are, you know, what's that? And it, to me, it's just sort of a, a difficult thing to understand. And so as soon as I heard about the Sakos movement, I thought, now there's something that I can understand and understand very clearly, you know. You, you buy a backpack, something that we all need, um, and somewhere a kid in need gets the same backpack and so you have that connection and there's I, th I think it's really cool you know the best help is is part giving and then part helping the person help themselves you know and I think I mean there's a clear connection that that the lack of education leads to poverty um, and it's it's a vicious cycle you know um, and I think that a lot of times extreme poverty leads to having to to go out and, and support yourself and you don't have time for education. So you think at that time, you know, and, and a lot of cases that's a reality. But you know, I mean, every huge problem has a solution, I think just by beginning to address it. And even if you, you know, even if you can just help a handful of kids that can start and then it starts a new cycle. And that's really, I think the goal of any, 
idea like this. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you.